Well, remember back in January when a group of high school students high school from Covington Catholic High School in Kentucky went to Washington, D.C. for a political field trip. They were there for the annual uh, pro-life march, and as they were waiting at the Lincoln Memorial for their buses home, they were accosted by different radical groups. A group of radical black activists who started swearing at them and shouting racial epithets, and then one aboriginal protester who famously walked right up to the face of one of the teenagers banging a drum. And that young man stood very quiet, smiling and not saying a word. Well, the media saw that young man's red Make America Great Again hat, and they had the story they wanted. This was a racist teenager who had trapped the Aboriginal man and insulted him racially. That's what the entire media said. CNN, Washington Post, the whole media jumped on that kid and demonized him. And soon his own school threw him under the bus, metaphorically. The school and the local bishop denouncing that young man, Nicholas Sandman, and his entire class. It took days for the truth to get its boots laced up and for fuller video to be seen showing that, in fact, Nicholas Sandman and his classmates conducted themselves perfectly. It was the black and aboriginal activists that were the ones doing the racial epithets, and no, Nicholas Sandman did not swarm or surround that aboriginal man. There's a lesson there about not bowing into the media mob and not allowing leftists online to demonize you. But the reason I tell you all this is because I don't think that lesson has been learned here in Toronto, and this time we're talking not about a Catholic school, but a Jewish school. A trip to Washington, nonetheless, a trip to a pro-Israel advocacy event, a conference called APAC, where students from a Jewish high school called CHAT, Community Hebrew Academy of Toronto, went down to Washington and they met with a pro-Israel activist that you might know, he's a former rebel contributor, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Well, they met with Dr. Gorka, and he gave them a big pro-Israel pep talk. Here's an excerpt from that meeting that was recorded. Take a listen to this. I, I, I was very clear in my mind. You know what? I don't have scars on my wrists from where they hanged me from the ceiling of the torture chamber. So bring it. Bring it because it's just words. So my message to you, and it's, it's, it's not a cop-out, because I've lived it and I have the right to say it. Never, ever give up and never let them get away with it. Six million murdered. We will never let that happen again. And it is up to you to stand up for the truth. There is only one truth. And every time we say, oh, I'm not going to risk my grades, or I don't want to get kicked out of the cool kids club at school, so I'm going to just not comment when they say BDS is cool. Every time we do that, they win. Every time they do that, a soul cries out saying, will you not stand for my memory? That's just a short excerpt from a one-hour presentation that Dr. Gorka made to these kids. Very emotional, very passionate, talking about his own father's physical torture at the hands of authoritarians and how Gorka himself is now a pro-Israel activist. Can you imagine that such a positive meeting encouraging these kids was turned into, I know it's hard to believe, a claim of anti-Semitism or even Nazism. Well, that's exactly what happened. Left-wing extremists online, just as they had done to the Covington Catholic kids, said that Dr. Gorka was anti-Semitic in some way, even though he was giving a pro-Israel talk at a pro-Israel conference to pro-Israel Jewish kids. And before long, just like Covington Catholic did in Kentucky, that school in Toronto through their own teacher and students to the wolves, sending out a letter to their entire community, including their alumni, 
denouncing the visit, saying if only they had known, they would never have approved it, and saying that a teacher who attended the meeting, Aviva Polonsky, inappropriately tweeted pictures and praise of Dr. Gorka. You can see her tweet here, honored to finally meet the great Seb Gorka, the former deputy assistant to Donald Trump and expert on ter counterterrorism. And you can see how pleased they all were. I should point out that in addition to this teacher, Aviva Polonsky, a vice principal of the school also attended. That's a picture of him right there. But nonetheless, the school bowed down to the internet leftists and denounced their own people. Well, I didn't mention it on my show last week, but in a video on YouTube, we set up a petition called StandWithAviva.com, Aviva being the teacher who was blamed by the school. Joining us now via Skype from Vancouver is an alumnus of CHAT who agrees that the school should not have thrown the teacher and the students to the wolves. Noah Alter, great to meet you. Um, you've actually put together a petition of your own in support of the teacher, Aviva Polonsky. What, what motivated you to do so? Well, I uh, saw the manufactured outrage and I knew that Sebastian Gorka is not a Nazi, not an anti-Semite. Everything he's done in the past, everything we've seen from him, everything he's produced shows very clearly that he's vehemently pro-Israel, vehemently pro-Jewish. Uh, I think the the allegations are outrageous. They're based on vague associations he had back when he was in Hungary. And from the, my perspective, it seems, you know, Hungary is a somewhat anti-Semitic country. It might be hard to get around politics without meeting anti-Semitic people. But everything Gorka has said is pro-Jewish, pro-Israel. He's very clearly not a Nazi sympathizer. Um, what irritated me the most was not that false accusations would be made about Gorka. I mean, that's life when you're the former deputy assistant of the president. Um, but that the school would cave so quickly and would blame the teacher, Aviva, and pretend they had no knowledge of this event, sort of push it off on her, when in fact they approved this event to begin with and a vice principal attended it. That's what shocked me. It didn't shock me that Gorka is a target. It didn't shock me that a bunch of online leftists tried to bully the school. What shocked me is that the school caved in so quickly. This is very odd behavior for the school. The school uh, usually is very proud to display views from across the political spectrum, but I think this might be a symbol of the times we're in and that the school is so willing to give in to pressure. Yeah, you know, um, the, the Covington Catholic school kids who I think were world famous, I can understand how the school got it wrong because it, they were literally standing outside at a memorial and the first reports that came in were by supposedly reputable news or agencies like the Washington Post. So the school in that case got the lies first and it took a while for the truth to get out. But in this case, the school knew everything in advance and at the time. Like I say, the teacher was there, the vice principal was there, the kids looked thrilled. So it's not like they had a chance to be misinformed by the fake news media, which is what happened in Covington. That's what I don't get. I don't, I'm, I am still angry at the Covington Catholic School for uh, being so quick to judge their own kids, but at least they have the excuse that the Washington Post lied about the facts. In this case, it was just some Twitter trolls on the left who weren't even lying about what happened. They're just sort of really, really mad that it happened. I, I just, I'm boggled by it. Do you think, do you think that the school regrets overreacting or do you think they, they actually mean what they said in that bizarre smear letter that they sent around? Um, well, the school's apology didn't seem overly sincere. It seemed more like they were just trying to get out some sort of apology and be done with it. I think a lot of it was just trying to avoid controversy, and they may have not realized that that would actually contribute to more. And also, I think a lot of it was that there was no real voice in support of Polanski when they sent out that letter. The only people who I heard really talking about it outside of the CJN, which was reporting pretty unbiasedly on it, was... Uh, we saw IJV, or Independent Jewish Voices, make a bunch of Facebook posts, uh, a few tweets, and an alumni letter from largely left-wing students. 
the, or former students who no longer go there and, you know, were not present on this trip. And in fact, you know, I, in, in the uh, letter that I wrote, I made it also only for alumni, but in fact, a number of students who are currently students of Ms. Polonsky, including students who were on that trip, asked me if they could sign the letter. Hmm. Um, one of the things that I think made the Covington Catholic School uh, do the right thing when they exhausted all other options first was that the family of Nicholas Salmon, I don't know how he did it, I don't know who helped them, but they teamed up with a PR firm and then later with one of the most powerful lawyers in the United States, they put together a definitive authoritative video showing the truth of what happened. I mean, it's very persuasive. You could find it online. But more importantly, they slapped these, these media outfits with warnings. And then when they didn't correct, they sued the Washington Post for $250 million. And I know here in Canada, we'd say, well, that sounds like a joke lawsuit. Well, the lawyer who did it is a serious heavy hitter uh, attorney who has done these sorts of suits in the past. I think it is a deadly serious lawsuit. Um, no one here in Toronto has lawyered up, and the teacher herself, Aviva Polonsky, um, maybe she's afraid to take on the school for being fired or something. Do you think that uh, a lawyer sending off some missives would uh, splash some cold water in the face of this uh, uh, Dr. Jonathan Levy, who signed the smear letter of her to begin with? Um, I don't necessarily think that lawyering up. See, with internal Jewish community issues, a lot of the time, I think what's really worrisome is if this kind of these uh, the issues within the community kind of spill out to uh, the general population because these are very much internal issues that we can deal with internally. Uh, I think a bigger issue would be calling to the fact that the original letter. Uh, written by a group of left-wing alumni, the open letter that they wrote was entirely to do with uh, trying to basically self-promotion at the end of the day. It was written by a member of the Liberal Party who probably wanted to get some brownie points with his Liberal Party friends, and that came at the expense of, you know, slandering the school and the teacher and Mr. Gorka. And, but that doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it was political opportunism is what it looks like to me. Yeah. So I don't think it's worth lawyering, lawyering up quite yet over this issue because it seems pretty internal. But I think it's more important that we reinforce it within our community uh, not to bring these issues externally and try to solve them among ourselves without, you know, get, delivering horrible slanders to people who, you know, are fellow Zionists felt and fellow Jews, people who are a part of our community. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing, Dr. Gorka, who was a great ally of Jews and Israel to be smeared this way and to be abandoned by the school, um, that's a pretty rough way to treat a friend. I will say that, I mean, I'm a Jew and I live in Toronto, so I have a, re a religious and approximate uh, geographic connection to the school. But I felt just the same connection to Nicholas Sandman of Covington Catholic in Kentucky. And I'm not Catholic and I'm not from Kentucky because I, th I saw it as a grave and unfairness. And really one of the poisons of social media is it, this Twitter mob that can get this Facebook mob that can get whipped up to smash and destroy someone's reputation just because some activists want it. Well, listen, uh, Noah, congratulations on you doing a counter petition. Let me ask you, uh, finally, have you received any reply to your petition? I, I see you have a number of names on it, people who graduated in different years. It's a very thoughtful letter. Uh, did you get a letter back from Dr. Levy or anyone else at the school? No, no I, sent the direct, I sent the letter directly to him, actually, but uh, I never received any reply. Yeah, somehow I'm not surprised by that. Well, we'll drop off our petition as well. Last I checked, I had over 3,000 petitions. I haven't looked, uh, signatures I haven't looked in a few days. It's probably over 4,000 now. Uh, listen, thanks, and thanks for standing up to be counted. And you told me just before we turned the camera on that you're with the Free Speech Society out there in, in Vancouver. Yeah, so congratulations speech. on that. Uh I'm sorry, yeah. what were you saying? Yeah, so I think part of what motivated me in uh, this situation was it was attack. It's an attack on free speech, too. You know, uh, students have a right to be exposed to a multitude of different viewpoints. 
and they shouldn't have to be harassed by a bunch of university students and a left-wing Twitter mob just because they choose to explore multiple angles of the political spectrum. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks so much for taking the time, and thanks for fighting back. It's great to see. Thank you, Ezra. All right, there you have it. That's Noah Alter, who joins us from Vancouver via Skype. He's an alumnus of CHAT, and the only thing I would disagree with him on is that I don't think this is a matter of internal community politics for the Jewish school. I think this goes to a larger problem in our society that anyone who takes a conservative point of view, a pro-Trump point of view, a pro-Israel point of view, is hounded and deplatformed in the Twitter mob. And I think just as I believed it was my place to care about those Covington Catholic kids, I think it's everyone's place to care about what happened here, even if you're not Jewish. And even if you don't really care about Israel, the kind of censorship we saw there was just Awful, that's my view. If you want to sign our petition, go to standwithaviva.com. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day, I do a video monologue, and then I interview an interesting guest, and then I end by reading my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.